Hey everyone, Sherman Chin here and today I'm going to continue on with the polka dot introduction that I started. So I'm going to have used this video here and by this guy who is really enthusiastic about polka dot. So globalization, <laughs> regulatory overreach, all of that, right? That this is the key difference. So we talked about building a new internet, a new server for the world. It is something that really embodies resilience. And so I want to show you in this presentation how polka dot has captured resilience at all the layers of the network through a very decentralized community, through a diverse ecosystem, and through technology itself. And I really want to say that at every layer of Polkadot, resilience is the key factor on which we focus on and what we're trying to build. So yeah, let's start with technology. I believe really that Polkadot has built the next evolution of the blockchain landscape. So I want to put this analogy in your head. If we think like Bitcoin as a calculator, right, it's be able to handle certain payments and money kind of simply. So basically what he's saying is that Polkadot has this resilience simply because it's on a blockchain. So if you think about it like in Web2, right? Uh, the difference here is like on Web2, you have like a database with a server that's centralized. Here, you have it decentralized. So it's not just dependent on one server. No government can just control one server. It's spread across the internet on the blockchain and what they call trustless. So um, the thing is that because it's across the internet uh, you don't have just one authority just controlling it so it's more resilient that way there's no way to just take it down no one person can just take everything down okay okay let's just skip forward a bit okay. computers your phones having multiple processing units right yep. multi-core is the way that we've been able to scale the blockchain to the next generation right that we can have applications, small applications, all work together, run on a single core. Or we can have applications that are very large, use multiple cores and provide more throughput. The multi-core architecture has been what has led us into the current generation of computers today. And we have done the same thing for the first time with blockchain. And multi-core technology ultimately allows us to achieve parallelization. So in the blockchain world, the terminology that gets used a lot is data and execution sharding. What we're really talking about here so I uh, just want to actually bring you back to the previous video again. Uh, you can actually check the link down below. Uh, what Polkadot has is that it's a hub and spoke model, right? So it processes parallel chains that update uh, the main relay chain every once in a while, like a, a, every, you know, during a period of time. So basically it's in, they run in parallel. So you can have your own parachain, which updates the main relay chain. And I guess that's what he means uh, by multi-core over here. Oops, <laughs> okay, the video, the uh, camera just dropped. So let's just try to get it back in place. There we go, yep. I don't want to refilm this entire video, so we're just going to continue on with the parallelization here. Mm. Separating out pieces of information, separating out applications, and having them run and execute in parallel so that we can achieve higher levels of throughput. And really, this is the, the thing. Like when we talk about the congestion on blockchain today, what normally happens, you have all these transactions, you put them into a single block, and then you put them through a single pipeline, one transaction at a time. When we talk about congestion, it is the fact that we only have one pipeline to process these transactions that they all get congested. If we're able to provide multiple cores, multiple throughputs, all in parallel, we can get past these current scaling issues. One of the overlooked issues when we make a design like this, a sharded design, a parallel design, is that we also make sure that each of the different shards or cores are being executed securely. Polkadot provides an economic scaling solution called shared security which allows every single application that runs on Polkadot to have the same security as Polkadot itself. So you don't have to come and bring your own security like other platforms. You actually get to inherit the security of Polkadot just by using the platform. And of course, if we envision a world with many applications and services, it is very important that we build app So uh, just like I said, because of the relay chain and uh, the different power chains they actually inherit those securities so that's a really good way of uh, working with like a template right especially if you're a developer so let's skip forward a bit uh, right here to the high speed Whatever, part to actually here. describe how we're innovating in these spaces if you just compare it one by one okay great so now we got all the technology stuff i want to talk about the community the resilient community that we've built in polka dot through decentralization everyone in polka dot believes and building a better, more resilient world with blockchain technology. Now that might be you as well. You just have to, you know, take a look at the ecosystem here. 
So one of the first people I want to talk about is our dot stakers. So these are people who are dot holders who actually help create the secure servers that you all want to use. So we have validators who are actually like running the servers or the computers all around the world, providing the Web3 cloud that Polkadot provides. And the nominators are individuals who hold dot who help select who these validators are. There's lots of people out in the world who want to be validators, but we can use our dot token and economies of scale to actually help them select. Okay, so I'm just going to summarize here what he's saying. Basically, on the Polkadot uh, network, we have like validators, which as I mentioned before, they are like the miners on the Bitcoin network, but validators are like the servers that are used to uh, process this like the transactions to validate the transactions right like say on bitcoin they use algorithms on uh polka dot they use proof of stake so basically if you put uh your dot or your coin your token your dot you will be able to use it as a form of voting okay but you can't just vote yourself to be a validator you have to have a nominator to nominate you as a validator in a way providing more security as well and then finally of course you get rewards for doing so because each of these voting actually takes dot which means you are actually paying money and it helps to support the uh, developers as well so i guess i'll end it here and if you guys have questions please do comment down below uh, you know uh, give me a like thumbs up and uh, click that notifications bell so before i go check out this kaiser beyond knife you can get it out uh, get it from thomas2s.com.my with my link down below for 10 percent off and then of course you can also get the not vpn for 30 percent off using my link down below to support this channel thank you so much guys i'll see you guys in the next one happy polka dotting